Mitten, and you're listening to The Mitten on Mitten. Thanks for tuning in. There's 78 days till Rhinebeck, so let's see what I've been up to. In Loose Threads this week, I've been scoping out the uh, authors that are going to be at the Sheep and Wolf Festival. And one in particular, of course, caught my eye, uh, Jillian Moreno. Uh, she wrote a book called Yarn Texture, A Knitter's Guide to Spinning, Building Exactly the Yarn You Want. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty good. Jillian is um, one of the uh, bloggers. Well, she's an editor of, of Ply Magazine, and, you know, she's been working with uh, craft publishing for more than uh, 20 years at Interweave Press, and she has uh, a couple other books out on the market. But she she's at Nitty.com. Um, she puts out a weekly uh, blog column about spinning, and she also has her own blog, um, which is highly entertaining, I think. Um, but... Uh, the, the cool thing about the, having the authors at Rhinebeck is um, not only do they do signings, but they'll, they'll also give um, little talks. So I was just trying to line up when, uh, when I was going to go and uh, check out the authors, because, you know, if Jillian's going to be giving a talk, I definitely want to see that. So um, the authors are up. Um, they do add uh, more authors as time goes on um, to the Sheep and Wool website, but uh, Jillian's is up there, and uh, that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun, so that's definitely going on the agenda for the day. Um, what's fitting this week? Uh, no knits. Um, <laughs> no clothes if I can get away with it. Uh, and t-shirt and shorts, really. Um, it's just been hot and muggy and uh, continues to be this New York summer, which happens uh, every year, you know, in the summer in New York. And it's been really miserable. I've uh, not even been wearing shoes if I don't have to um, because it's just been very, very oppressively hot. But I've been working on making new things for the corkle, um, the crochet or knit along. Uh, like I mentioned last week, I finished the crochet version of the Ken's Manly Lace Mitts. And this week, this week I finished the knit version of the Man Manly Lace um, Mitts. Um, that was really what I was knitting for the entire week. Um, well, yeah, I'll talk about that later. Uh, but um, but they're done, done, done. So I have two pairs of mitts all done and, and ready to go for Christmas gifts for my two sisters, um, which will be a surprise to them. Uh, I think my little sister... Uh, listens to the podcast, but I'm really sure my older sister doesn't, because uh, I don't know if she knows how to get podcasts. Well, she knows how to use her phone. No, I'm just kidding. She's not that bad. She's She is technically savvy, um, but uh, she spends her summer times out uh, gardening and kayaking, um, So, which is always fun. I do do love kayaking myself. And anyway, um, so that's what I've been knitting. I've been knitting the mittens, and they're done. Woohoo! So uh, spinning, I did a very, very little, maybe a foot of the drop spindle merino, which is still not done for the competition, and um, I did. Oh, maybe, maybe five inches of uh, the Hipstrings Buoy Beacon, 
which is on the on the wheel. Um, really, not a lot. It's just every time I go to touch fiber, it's it's all sticky and everything. And I, it's not that my spinning room is really hot or humid or anything. It's just that I have this feeling of heat and humidity that is really just not making uh, the spinning experience uh, enjoyable. And quite frankly, if it's not enjoyable, I don't want to do it. Um, so I really haven't been, although I just, uh, I fiddled with it a bit, but nothing serious. Um, which is kind of a bummer because I was doing so well with my 15 minutes a day. But, uh, you know, now I get why they put the Tour de Fleece in July because it really encourages you to keep spinning and spinning even though you probably just don't even want to go near fiber. Um, so it's a good it's a good timing uh, for that competition. I didn't compete in the Tour de Fleece events this year so I kind of stayed out of the whole thing. Um, but that's what I was spinning. Maybe about Ooh, half a foot. Now when I say it that way, it seems much longer, right? Half a foot of knitting this week. Uh, spinning, rather. Uh, finished, well, like I mentioned, the uh, lacy, that the manly lace bits are finished, finished, finished. They're all, I, I ended up doing them flat, so they're all, uh, sewn up the sides and all the ends are woven in and and they are ready to go good to go they fit very comfortably and and I think um, my sisters will enjoy them uh, I they came out pretty cool the way the uh, the way the pattern goes it it doesn't make a rectangle uh, with a thumb it makes a chevron um, because you're doing uh, decreases either to the right or the left, and then you reverse the decrease uh, once you get above the thumb. And that makes the fabric of the knit um, turn into a chevron, which puts the seam, um, it, it kind of hides the seam more because it's not like a straight, a straight thick seam. It, it, because you're making a, a greater than or less than sign out of the seam, it tends to blend into the background of the fabric more, which I thought was a really neat um, way for Ken to do that. So I have finished that, and I'm just uh, on the boards encouraging other people to give it a try. I do have the crochet, uh, interpret my crocheted interpretation of his pattern available. If anybody wants it, I'd be happy to um, PM you that in uh, Ravelry. Um, so stop by the boards and uh, if you want to, send me a send me a message either on the boards or PM me, and I'll be happy to get that out f um, for you. Because, like I said, I think it's pretty cool. Alrighty. And now a word not from a sponsor. Hip Strings brings together modern support spindles, fiber, and the spinners who love them. With custom blends inspired by the coast of Maine to their cocktail hour collection inspired by, well, being parents, working, life in general, Hip Strings offers rich saturated colors and fiber blends to quench your spinner's thirst. Stop by and visit them at hipstrings.com for the perfect summertime porch spinning companion. In Stash Up Down this week, um, I did send an email to the, um, was it hotyarns.com to find out whatever happened to the sock yarn that I ordered because I never received it, and I also never received a response to my email. So I know that a few of my friends have had good experience um, with that company, but um, I'm going to say if you really want something and you want it to be delivered, uh, that wouldn't be my first choice right now. 
I don't know what's up with their company or anything. I can say that they did not uh, take the funds out of my account because I used PayPal to pay them. Um, so they didn't take the funds out, um, but they also uh, didn't ship me anything. So there was no stash up there. And uh, stash down, well, uh, two skeins of the uh, Knit Picks um, Wool of the Andes uh, Superwash Merino in lemongrass. Uh, that's out of my stash. I finished that up and I finished up um, a little bit more of the Shetland singles that I had left over from doing my Celeste, um, which is uh, the other Jared Flood Scarf um, shawl that I knit. So in stash up down, uh, a little bit of down, uh, not none up, and I think that's pretty darn good. Um, so there you have it, there it is. Oh, and where I want to be. So I was looking at uh, Clara Parks, I don't know if you know Clara Parks, but if you don't, you should Google her because she's got a lot of interesting things. Um, she maintains the Knitter's Review calendar of knitting events, so I was checking that out to see if there was anything really fun going on. And uh, most of the stuff that's coming up in the next week is uh, weaving or just shopping based. And that didn't really tickle my fancy, although I did notice that they had the, um, uh, where was it, the Australian Sheep and Wool Show. Um, took place on the 15th through 17th of July, and that sounded like a lot of fun, you know, because I could just, like, go to Australia in a heartbeat. Um, <laughs> kidding. But anywho, um, the one thing that did catch my eye, because, because of the weather, there is from August 1st through 8th in Iceland. Just, just let that, the, the name of the country sink in there for a minute. Iceland. Doesn't it just sound like a cool place? <sighs> All right, so they're having hiking and knitting with the elves. And they say that they have actual elves that you will be knitting with as you hike. And I thought that sounded like a lot of fun, aside from the whole hiking part. If it was just knitting, I would so be into it. Um, but that's where I'd want to be. I'd want to be knitting with the elves in Iceland because it sounds like it's got built-in air conditioning in the name of the country, even though I know that's so not true, but it just sounds good. Alrighty. In Grabby Paws this week, I've been, uh, I've been looking at uh, silk. Hip Strings had a uh, silk sampler um, for sale. They're going to be doing a uh, spin along in Sweets Off the Wheel on Ravelry uh, for Silk starting in September. And uh, just so happened she got her delivery of Silk and put up a Silk sampler, and that looked so very tempting. Um, the last time I spun with Silk was when I made that um, cashmere and Silk scarf. That it was a really pretty pattern for the scarf, and the silk was really fun to work with. I, I drafted out silk hankies, and as I was spinning, I combined the silk hankies and the cashmere, kind of um, carding on the fly, as it were. Uh, oh, I get that, on the fly, like on the flyer. Wow, I never got that before. Anyway, um, so... Grabby pause. I was looking at the silk sampler, and of course that brought me down into the dark rabbit hole of all things silk, which I spent a goodly amount of time on. And then I found that I still have a couple of silk hankies left, so I can participate and spin along without um, purchasing anything, which is good um, because my Rhinebeck budget took a hit this week. Uh, I had to pay for brakes for my truck. But you can't get to Rhinebeck unless you uh, 
have brakes on your truck because apparently you have to stop when you get there. <laughs> so brakes were kind of important and, uh, you know, Rhinebeck money is also an emergency fund. So that's all's fair in love and budgeting. Um, in yarn and budgeting, I should say. Um, but anyway, grabby paws, silk sampler from hip string. It's so pretty. In dough this week, um, manly lace mitts. Manly lace mitts, that was such a huge dough. I have to say, when I did the crochet version, I didn't have too much of a problem. I really enjoyed figuring out the pattern and I was very focused on what I was doing. When I went to do the knit, I was the arrogant knitter. I had four pages of instructions, which I read through a couple of times, um, but I really didn't bother doing anything other than reading through a couple of times and then glancing at it as I was doing the mittens. So needless to say, I mucked up the pattern instead of doing a knit two together yarn over. I did a knit one yarn over knit two together. I did the, the knit two togethers on the wrong side where it should have been a slip slip knit. Um, I kept knitting together my yarn overs and my knit two togethers when I came back across on the purl row because, you know, it's just a little mitt and it was just a simple lace, so I really didn't focus and I really didn't pay attention. And it kicked my, my behind. It really did. All because I couldn't be bothered to look at the pattern that I was staring at. And the only way that I found out that I really mucked things up was when I went and uh, was working on the thumb gusset and I was reading it one stitch at a time, read the stitch, do the stitch, and after I did four rows, I was like, oh my god, the pattern doesn't match at all. I've really messed it up. And so it was rip out, and it was rip out time and time and time again. And I tell you, I started them, I think, on Saturday. By Thursday, I was, not only did I want to take a blowtorch to them and burn them, and then take a blowtorch to the ashes and burn the ashes. I was in tears over a silly knitting pattern because I was so frustrated because I just thought, you know, I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. So I took a deep breath and I just read through it again. And then I started actually reading the pattern, actually looking at my knitting and actually doing what the pattern said to do. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, when I followed the pattern and the instructions, <laughs> it actually worked. And I was able to come out with a lovely set of mitts. But it was key to follow the pattern and the instructions. I even put in a lifeline because I got tired of ripping back so far. Um, so the lifeline also helped me. Um, but it was really, it was just focusing and doing what the pattern said to do. There's nothing wrong with the pattern. The pattern works really good. They are knit in the flat, not in the round. And that's where I started. I started knitting them in the round. And uh, it just didn't translate well when I went to do the increases for the thumb gusset because uh, they wouldn't place in the right place, which was also because I was using the wrong darn knitting stitch pattern. So, anywho... It was, uh, I, I lost count after six rip restarts um, on them. I, I don't know how many times I ripped them out. I can tell you that that Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash Merino held up very well to the rip ripping out, and so did the Shetland. So I was, <laughs> I was really happy about that. Um, Yes, that's what I, I was actually doing. I was, I was testing it for the manufacturer to see how many times uh, it could be ripped out. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but because it's a lace pattern and you're using, uh, and it's an oversized needle, um, 
that you're using for it, you do need to be careful not to knit two stitches together when you're not supposed to. <clears throat> and that happened quite frequently. So that's my dough for the week. And uh, I think that's quite enough. I'm, I'm looking forward. I spent some time when I was doing the radio, um, when I was at the radio station this morning, um, knitting on stockinette socks in the round just because it was very calming and there were no stitch patterns. But I will get back on the sweater uh, this coming week and uh, move forward to that because tick-tock, tick-tock, time is running out for that. Okay, and where I'll be. Uh, work and home, home and work. Um, hopefully it'll be a, a quiet week. I almost made it through a quiet week last week. Um, aside from uh, town board meetings and such. But uh, this coming week is... Uh, I have no seminars to go to, which I did last week. I have no meetings to go to, which I did last week. So I just... Uh, get to the train station, deal with the heat, and uh, come on home. That's, that's my plan, and it's a darn good plan. Uh, so that's where I'll be. In questions for the mitten this week, um, we have one question, not from Kath. <laughs> it's from, actually it's from an anonymous, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover their name up to protect them. Um, but they wanted to know, they said that they were going to do the corkle, that they were going to do the knit along, and they decided that they really didn't want to. And they wanted to know if this was a horrible thing, um, if I would hate them forever, would I forgive them? And quite frankly, it's not a horrible thing. It's quite all right. Uh, the whole point of doing the knit along or the crochet along is for you to be able to uh, have a little bit of group support uh, while you're working through a pattern. Um, that's why I wanted to make sure I did did them really fast at the beginning of the knit along and, and crochet along. Uh, so if people had questions or stuff that I ran into, I would be able to uh, help out. Um, so that's the whole point of it is to be able to do it when others are doing it so you can uh, share the knowledge, so to speak. But it, it's, not a, it's not a blood contract. You don't have to do it. It's, it's quite all right. You should knit what makes you happy and, and whatever makes you happy using your stash, be it hand spun or commercial yarn. And... Um, that's kind of like the whole point of doing fiber arts. I mean, it's it's to make you happy. So no, I'm I'm not going to hate you forever. Maybe a little while. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to hate you at all. Uh, if you said you were going to do it and and you changed your mind, um, that's one of the great things. That's why a lot of people have many works in progress. Is they simply change their mind. So it's perfectly okay to uh, to do or not to do. Um, it's very non-pressure. Just like, you know, that's why I do the you didn't know there was a contest because it's all about non-pressure. And that's a good thing. It's a very good thing. And I, I won't hate you at all. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye.